So this guy comes up to me and says, what's the vision? What's the big idea? I opened my mouth and words came out like this. The vision? The vision is Jesus. Obsessively, dangerously, undeniably Jesus. The vision is an army of young people. You see bones, I see an army. And they are free from materialism. They laugh at nine to five little prisons. They could eat caviar on Monday and crust on Tuesday. They wouldn't even notice. They know the meaning of the matrix, the way the West was won. They are mobile like the wind. They belong to the nations. They need no passport. People write their addresses in pencil and wonder at their strange existence. They are free, yet they are slaves of the hurting and dirty and dying. What is the vision? The vision is holiness that hurts the eyes. It makes children laugh and adults angry. It gave up the game of minimum integrity long ago to reach for the stars. It scorns the good and strains for the best. It is dangerously pure. Light flickers from every secret motive, every private conversation. It loves people away from their suicide leaps, their Satan games. This is an army that will lay down its life for the cause. A million times a day, its soldiers choose to lose their life, that they might one day win the great well done of faithful sons and daughters. Such heroes are as radical on Monday morning as Sunday night. They don't need fame from names. Instead, they grin quietly upwards and hear the crowds chanting again and again, come on. And this is the sound of the underground, the whisper of history in the making, foundations shaking, revolutionaries dreaming once again. Mystery is scheming and whispers. Conspiracy is breathing. This is the sound of the underground. And the army is disciplined. Young people who beat their bodies into submission. Every soldier would take a bullet for his comrade at arms. The tattoo on their back boasts for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Sacrifice fuels the fire of victory in their upward eyes. Winners, martyrs, who can stop them? Can hormones hold them back? Can failure succeed? Can fear scare them or death kill them? And the generation prays like a dying man with groans beyond talking, with warrior cries, euphoric tears, and with great barrel loads of laughter. Waiting, watching, 24-7, 365. Whatever it takes, they will give. Breaking the rules, shaking mediocrity from its cozy little hide, laying down their rights and their precious little wrongs, laughing at labels, fasting essentials, the advertisers cannot hold them. Hollywood cannot hold them. Peer pressure is powerless to shake their resolve at late night parties before the cockerel cries. They are incredibly cool, dangerously attractive inside. On the outside, they hardly care. They wear clothes like costumes to communicate and celebrate, but never to hide. Would they surrender their image or their popularity? They would lay down their very lives. Swap seats with a man on death row, guilty as hell. A throne for an electric chair. With blood and sweat and many tears, with sleepless nights and fruitless days, they pray as if it all depends on God and live as if it all depends on them. Their DNA chooses Jesus. He breathes out, they breathe in. Their subconscious sings. They had a blood transfusion with Jesus. Their words make demons scream in shopping centers. Don't you hear them coming? Herald the weirdos, summon the losers and the freaks. Here come the frightened and forgotten with fire in their eyes. They walk tall and trees applaud. Skyscrapers bow. Mountains are dwarfed by these children of another dimension. Their prayers summon the hounds of heaven and invoke the ancient dream of Eden. And this vision will be. It will come to pass. It will come easily. It will come soon. How do I know? Because this is the longing of creation itself, the groaning of the spirit, the very dream of God. My tomorrow is his today. My distant hope is his 3D. And my feeble, whispered, faithless prayer invokes a thunderous, resounding, bone-shaking, great amen from countless angels, from heroes of the faith, from Christ himself. And he is the original dreamer, the ultimate winner, guaranteed. Brothers and sisters, God desires to manifest himself in power. He wants to come like that raging torrent, to overturn the things that stand in his way on our campuses. We as Christians have a tremendous opportunity, and I'd say obligation, to prepare the way for such a movement. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people will pray. We need to pray. And I'm not talking about your typical Jesus help me on my midterm prayers. Not that that's wrong, but John Piper once said, 
Prayer is a wartime walkie-talkie, and we don't understand why it doesn't work when we use it as a domestic intercom to ring the maid for another pillow. He was referring to fervent revival prayer. Urgent pleas for people to come to Christ and for believers to experience life-altering renewal, as opposed to the selfish whines for a more comfortable life that so often characterize our petitions. Such prayer is the channel through which God's revival power flows. We must pour out our hearts in a fresh way for the salvation of our family and friends, our campuses, and the world.